is that properties are worth a tiny fraction, one one hundred, a tiny fraction of what they actually are. We have a racist attorney general who's a horror show who ran on the basis that she was going to get Trump before she even knew anything about me. This is what the Trump organization said it was worth. In 2020, they self-reported that it was worth $27 million. And now he's going around screaming that they're framing him. Then your own company framed you. It also seems that he doesn't, and this has happened to him before, have a top-notch legal team with him. He has the one lawyer who he had to pay in advance because he stiffs everybody. And then he has Alina Haba, who gives a great cable news hit, and she, he's been, she's been on Jesse's show a bunch of times. But it seemed that she forgot, or just I don't know what happened, to check the box saying that they wanted a jury trial. And then Donald Trump is complaining to the cameras and on Truth Social that it is un-American to have a trial without a jury when his own crackpot team asked for that. Monday was Trump's first day in court for the civil fraud trial in which the former president's been accused of inflating the value of his assets. Trump is now on the line for a $250 million penalty. New York Attorney General Letitia James has accused Trump, his sons, and his businesses of inflating the value of their assets in order to get better loans and insurance deals. Today in court, we will prove our case. New York Attorney General Letitia James accusing Mr. Trump, his sons, Eric and Don Jr., and his namesake company, the Trump Organization, of exaggerating the value of his real estate properties, including Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago, and 40 Wall Street, by over $2 billion to receive better loan terms from banks. During the trial, lawyers even claimed that Trump inflated his assets so he could get a better spot on the Forbes list of billionaires. You know, it's not shocking, but it's real and it's accountable. Donald Trump at his root, at his root, has always been a grifter. And nearly everything he's ever touched, including the presidency, has been involved with scams that he runs. I mean, here is a guy who, when he was president of the United States, he was running people through his then hotel in Washington, D.C., never declared the fact that, you know, his businesses were going to be independent of him, he was going to put him in a blind trust. Nothing like that during four years in, in, in office. And it continues each and every day. This is not a surprise that he has uh, exaggerated his wealth, his holdings, his square footage of his apartment on Fifth Avenue. Not a surprise at all. Jessica Tarlov, the resident liberal over on Fox News, broke down the trial, first reminding viewers that Trump has publicly bragged about exploiting loopholes and knowingly engaging in fraudulent business practices in the past. Donald Trump campaigned in 2015 and 2016 over doing things like this. He told everybody, I'm the guy that can fix the code because I'm the one that knows every loophole and I've been taking advantage of them. So we all knew this was happening. And they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero. At the time, he sold this as a positive to all of his supporters, even though the rest of us presumably saw it for what it was, criminal. She also clarifies for viewers that despite Trump now claiming to be framed regarding the true value of his assets, the 2020 value was originally self-reported by the Trump Organization. Finally, Tarlov points out that Trump's legal team is not exactly full of first-choice attorneys. Trump, who has a well-earned reputation for not paying his legal fees, has found himself in a position where the best and brightest attorneys don't want to work for him. There are a few reasons why attorneys probably don't want to work for Trump. For example, they don't want to work for free. They don't want their reputations damaged. They don't want to be implicated in illegal activity they've seen and heard that Trump is notoriously difficult to work with, or they just aren't confident that Trump has a strong enough case to win. So now Trump is left with Alina Haba, who just went on Fox News to attempt to convince Americans that Trump is not only a successful businessman, but that he built his company from scratch. People forget that President Trump, I, I hope they don't forget, you shouldn't, you can't. President Trump was a very important person before he was president. He was a successful businessman, which is why he was a great president. He built this company from scratch and now they're attacking his business, the people that work for this business, and his children. It's uncanny and he's not gonna stand for it because this is political lawfare. This isn't, this isn't the justice system. This is political 100%. To be fair, I guess that interpretation really depends on how you define a successful businessman. 
as someone who actually creates and grows a profitable and productive business, or someone who enriches themselves by fraudulent and unethical means. It also depends on whether or not you consider multiple loans, a trust, and financial guarantees from his father worth millions and millions of dollars building something from scratch. And as far as Trump's legal team goes, someone either didn't fill out a form correctly or intentionally requested that Trump has a bench trial as opposed to a trial by jury. Trump is now defaming the judge, which is not surprising, but he's also saying that it's very unfair that he doesn't get to have a jury. It's not unfair, his legal team requested the bench trial. Some speculate that this was done accidentally because Trump's legal team is so horribly incompetent. Others say that this was done strategically so that Trump could have a single target, the judge, to defame and discredit publicly, which he's already doing, and one single enemy to blame for his misfortune if and when he's finally found guilty for the crimes that he appears to have knowingly committed. If he's convicted by a jury, it's harder to point one single finger. Besides, one single enemy, one name, one face is easier to direct a mob towards. This will be an interesting trial to keep an eye on. We've already seen that it's been an eventful first day, so I think it's safe to assume that the rest of the trial will continue in the same way. So stay tuned. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow me on all the socials and also check out my podcast, Modern Context. Episode four is out right now and we're talking about Armenia and Azerbaijan. Thanks.